I know. So it, ma it matters to me. No, well, I've been living. 
feedback back 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 Test, test, test. How's it uh, how's it out there, guys?
was just testing something. Oh. <laughs> I was just, no, 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 I was just testing years in thy sight are but yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night thou carriest them away as with a flood they are as a sleep in the morning they are like grass which groweth up and in the morning it flourisheth and grow up the evening it is cut down and withereth for all our days are passed away in thy wrath we spend our years as a tale that is told the days of our years are three scores years and ten and if by reason of strength they be four score years yet in their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off. So, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Brothers and sisters, good morning. It is a delight to have those who are here supporting the family. And we are grateful for the greater congregation that is joining us and the various social medias. We are living in uncertain times. And we are 
in the midst of death. On certain times, because of course of what we are experiencing in the world, in this state, we have to mask ourselves, we have to distance ourselves, but I thank God that God is not a distanced God. He's very near, he's Emmanuel, the God with us. So even as we congregate this morning, and even as we watch, we have the assurance of the presence of the Lord with us. I want to extend condolences to the family on behalf of the North Orlando Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Winter Gardens Seventh-day Adventist Church. They are watching even now. They would have loved, of course, to be here, but they are here in spirit. So our condolences to each and every one and the families. I visited with um, Sister Williams prior to her husband passing and subsequent to that. And I can remember Sister Williams as a woman who loved the Lord. She, at our visits, mentioned repeatedly her exploits in serving God and helping to build and renovate the church there at Linden. She was exuding with joy and appreciation just to work with Jesus Christ. So I want to believe that Sister William has left with us a legacy of service. And I trust that we can remember her by serving the Lord. Today, yes, we mourn, we weep. And as a pastor and as a church, we empathize and sympathize with the family. But as the word reminds us, we are not weeping hopelessly. And we are not sorrowing hopelessly. We know and I believe that she has lived her life with Jesus Christ. And I believe she's asleep in Jesus. And I believe that when Christ comes again, she will rise with Jesus Christ. So if that's any consolation, I trust that we will um, be encouraged to know that when God comes again, Sister Williams will be with Jesus Christ. And I trust that we would prepare our lives so that when God comes, when Christ returns, we along with Sister Williams will meet him where death will never have his presence there again. Praise the Lord. This morning we are going to follow the program as outlined. So if your name is there on the program, when the item with your name comes around, we're just inviting you to come straight ahead and do what you um, were asked to do. We would appreciate that very much. We are going to begin now with prayer from Elder Clark, and then we have the opening name, and then we'll move on from there. God bless you. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Heavenly Father who art in heaven, we have come to you because in times like these, we need a savior. A savior who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And because your son has lived among us and even suffered the cruelty of death, we know you understand. So we ask now that you send your Holy Spirit to be with us as we celebrate uh, the life of Sister Gloria. Father, we want to thank you for the exemplary life she lived, as we can see demonstrated by the caring and devotion showed by Lloyd and Allison as they stood by her during the past several months. Father, we ask your blessing on each one in attendance here and virtually, and pray 
that in this service you will be lifted up and we will find comfort we need at this hour father we know there will be tears but underneath the tears is a certain amount of joy because of the hope we have in Jesus sister Gloria is just sleeping your word says so awaiting the soon coming of the life giver we pray for the pastor that has been entrusted to bring the message of comfort and hope for the family and father we pray that we all will be uplifted making our calling and election sure so that on that great getting up morning we can rejoin sister gloria and all the saints throughout all the ages who have accepted you and will spend eternity with you we pray for christ's sake amen we will now sing number 530 it is well with my soul Good morning, everyone. Five thirty. I don't know if everybody have it. Um, anyway.
I'm now going to read a scripture from the Old Testament. It's going to be Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Jesus Christ. Thank you. There was a holy hush all over as I walked into the room. Then as I stood before him face to face, I was gloriously made new. There was a great and awesome presence and a light as bright as day. Then as I bowed to kneel with the angels, I heard the Spirit say, all rise, all rise To stand before the throne In the presence of the Holy One All rise, all rise As we worship the Messiah All rise I looked at those all around me with their hands held lifted high And then the Spirit laid his hand on me and I lifted mine We were singing hallelujahs, praises to his name Then as I bowed to kneel with the angels, I heard the Spirit say all rise, all rise To stand before the throne In the presence of the Holy One All rise, all rise As we worship the Messiah Singing holy, holy, holy Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was and is and is to come. He is the great I am. All oh, rise, all oh, rise. To stand before the throne in the presence of the Holy One. All oh, rise. 
all rise as we worship the Messiah. All rise. Oh. To stand before the throne in the presence of the Holy One. All rise, all rise, as we worship the Messiah, singing holy, 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 worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was and is and is to come. He is the great. To stand before the throne in the presence of the Holy One. All rise, all rise, as we worship the Messiah. All Scripture reading is taken from Daniel 12, 1 through 4, and it's taken from the Clear Word Bible. The time of the end, at that time, Michael, the time of the end, Michael, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects God's people, will finish his work in heaven and bring all things to an end. But before he comes, there will be a time of trouble such as there never has been since their first were nations, even up to that time. That's when God's people will be delivered, everyone whose name is written in his book. Many who sleep in their graves will be re resurrected to see his coming, some to everlasting life, but some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who understood and acted wisely will shine as the brightness of the permanent, and those led many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You need to stop writing now. Daniel, you need to stop writing now. Daniel, and roll up the scroll. What is written will be sealed and will not be fully understood until the time of the end. 
when many will open the scroll and, in, and interest in the prophecies will increase. There will also be great advances in knowledge and many people will travel back and forth all over the world. have one mother and when you lose her you never get another one she's the most special person I lost my mother in 2011 so I share in your grief today it doesn't seem like it was that long ago but Miss Williams was a woman of prayer I know that for a fact she told me that on more than one occasion and uh, I am honored to be a part of this service today just remember there are times in our lives we face things that we think we cannot bear and the truth is we can't bear them on our own but the Bible says that he will bear them for us okay the title of this is he will carry you He will carry you. He will carry you. 
I met Gloria long before we worked together at the record office in Jamaica. We both lived in Spanish Town and we worked together at the record office until she left for London. There I actually have a photograph of us on our last day of work at the record office. We lost touch with each other when she went to London and then we discovered each other again when we started working together at St. Mary's. After her retirement from St. Mary's, we parted again, but kept in touch with, she, with our monthly long calls, which lasted hours. During those calls, we spoke about everything, but mostly we went back and forth, asking each other about people we knew from Jamaica and those we worked with at St. Mary's. We also reminisced about experiences at the hospital. Gloria was a great friend and confidant and I will miss her. God bless you, Gloria. My condolence to Allison and Lloyd and the rest of the family. God go with you. Rest in peace, Dorothy. My name is James Sutherland or Elder Sutherland. I attend the North Orlando Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I was one of the elders that would oftentimes go by and do the ordinance of humility with Sister Williams. We would sit there with her sometimes, we would sing her favorite songs, and she would always have a smile on her face. She had this cute little laugh that if something amused her, she would laugh. I'll never forget that laugh family, you know, there's a text in the Bible that says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now is your time to weep. And that's all right. That's expected. Your loved one is not dead. She's just sleeping. That's the reassurance we have that someday soon, if we all remain faithful, we will see her again. Family, don't lose hope. Hold on. This is a strange time. It's a strange new normal that we can't see each other face to face at this time. But someday soon, we will say the great deliverer's face, face to face. No COVID-19 will stop us then. So let us hold on to these things and think of the good times that you spent with your mother. She is my friend and your mother, but she is God's child. So don't lose hope and God will. First of all, my deepest sympathy to Allison, Lloyd, and the rest of the family. And I'm sorry for your loss. I first met Gloria when she arrived here from England. We both worked in the delivery room together at a certain hospital. Her daughters were both the same ages. Gloria always traveled with peace, compassion, empowerment, and empathy. Throughout our friendship that lasted for over 50 years, we encountered many storms. But Gloria was always the one who stilled the waters. I, for example, 
One night, Gloria and I went into work and the, super, the director of nurses left a note the following morning for me to have a meeting. That meeting consisted of six residents, one attending physician, and the chief of OBGYN. And when I asked Gloria to come for me, she didn't bat an eye. At that time, we both had our daughters at home, husbands who had to go to work, and they had to make out their arrangements. And Gloria entered the lion's den with me. My guardian angel was always there with me. This is one of the aspects of my angel, of this angel who has now gone to join the other angels. Once more, my deepest sympathy to the entire family. Good evening. Uh, greetings, Williams family. My name is Hope Maxwell Daly. I am Olive Prince's baby sister. On behalf of the Prince and the Maxwell family, we send you our deepest condolences. As long as I can remember, uh, you've all been in my life ever since I started coming to the States at the age of two. Uh, no visit to Cambridge Heights was the same without time spent with Auntie Gloria and Lloyd and Uncle Theo and Allison. Um, you'll never be forgotten. We share the same birthday, September 22nd. And though I didn't see you often, you were always in my thoughts and I know that I was always in yours. Um, for more family to yours, we're sending our love during these difficult times. God bless. I've been honored to say a couple of words and reflect upon the life of Sister Williams. Sister Williams was a very integral part of my childhood at the Linden Seventh Day Adventist Church. I can always remember that warm smile, that welcoming spirit, that calm voice that always had a word of encouragement. Even through my tumultuous years, uh, Sister Williams and Brother Williams were a full support. They co-parented me from a, from a very close distance and they were very close to my family. Sister Williams' spirit has always been a calm and wonderful spirit. Even speaking to her when she was uh, starting to deal with some challenges, she even reflected such love through the telephone from New York to Florida. I'm gonna miss her, but I'm definitely, definitely sure that um, if I'm granted the opportunity to make it to the kingdom, that I will be seeing Sister Williams in the kingdom with that beautiful, beautiful smile and that warm spirit. Good morning, church family. To Allison and her family, to Lloyd and his family, to Pat and all other family members, I would like to say to you to be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Of all of the beautiful things in life, the most beautiful is character. And he or she who possesses a beautiful character is worthy of notice. A wonderful life is the fruit of a beautiful character. Gloria, our beloved Gloria, possessed a wonderful and graceful character and lived a godly life. When our family arrived at the Linden Church, one of the first persons I met was Gloria Williams and her family. Gloria was a sweet, kind, and loving personality. Since I was the new pastor's wife, Gloria welcomed our family into her home. She shared such wonderful hospitality by preparing delicious meals and allowing us to spend a number of nights in their home. She was always supportive in every way. Even when she and Elder Williams and their family retired and moved to Florida, we continued our friendship. We would call each other and speak of our children and the progress they were making in their lives. Gloria loved her wonderful children and her lovely and lively grandchildren. When Elder Williams had to leave us, we were there to lend our support to Gloria and the family, and we continued our friendship. It has been such a joy 
and a delight to know Gloria Williams. She helped me to keep my mind and heart stayed upon Jesus. I'm so happy our paths crossed. Even as we mourn Gloria's passing, we are resigned to accept our all-wise and loving Heavenly Father's will. We express our gratitude to God for having left this beautiful life among us for a time to blossom out and bless my life as well as the lives of others. This life, glorious life, with its sweetness and righteousness like the fragrance of a rose. In 1984, I lost my mom, someone whom I did not know then and I still do not know them today, sent me this poem, which I would like to share with you, which was so encouraging to my heart. It is entitled, Just the Other Side. Heed not the thoughts of sorrows as you pass by me tomorrow, for the pain of life is gone. I've walked my mile. I lie alone, but I'm not lonely. So please don't grieve and mourn me for the Lord. He only loaned me for a while. Yesterday is gone forever and we can't go back, not ever. Though you'll miss me now and then from other days. And in the fall of late September, you may cry as you remember watching leaves of autumn blow their separate ways. The many hours we spent in sharing, loving, giving, always caring, will cause some inner pain that living brings. But dying comes to all as we heed our maker's call and we're carried home to where the angels sing. And to Lloyd and Alan's Allison and Pat, you're strong. I know you'll make it, even though it's hard to take it, as the darkness now between us seems so wide. What we shared will last forever. A time will come, we'll be together, as I'm waiting for you, just the other side. Lord, continue to bless and strengthen you. Good morning, everyone just want to tell you how I met the Williams. Approximately 20 years ago, we moved to Queens and the Williams happened to be my neighbor. After moving in, the following day, the Williams came over, introduced themselves, and I'm glad they did. Mrs. Williams was the one, first one to say, if you need anything, or if you have any question, our doors are open and I'm glad not only were their doors open their hearts were open also and for that I give God thanks Mrs. William was always the one that I my go-to person to talk to just want to say I pray God's grace and continuous strength upon the family and I bless you in Jesus name Amen. Growing up as the young children of a pastor, we always knew that we were at a church for a season and then we had to move on. When we arrived at Linden, I was about 12 years old. We were moving from Boston. I had to change schools at an awkward age and move to yet another church where I knew no one. But we were quickly welcomed by the first elder, Elder Theophilus Williams his wife, Gloria, and their family. We quickly became friends with Allison, Pat, and Lloyd. Sister Williams cooked the most appetizing meals and we were able to rest and relax on Sabbath afternoons. Eventually, we moved into our new home, but the fellowship and the friendship continued. Over the years, everyone grew up and began to live their own lives. The Williams moved to Florida, the Cummings moved to Georgia. I would frequently bump into Lloyd at Ebenezer or at Linden and we would catch up. The families kept in touch and Sister Gloria often would tell loving stories about her children and her grandchildren, all of whom she loved dearly. Earlier this year, our lives were all changed when we were hit with the COVID-19 virus. 
one of the most disappointing things we faced was that when Sister Gloria became ill, we were unable to travel to visit her. Even now, we have to depend on modern technology to unite us, but we are here, and we stand here with you in support during this difficult time. Some friends you have for a season, and other friends you have for a lifetime, and the Williams are those friends. God bless you, Williams family, in the difficult days ahead and always. I want to give my sincere condolences to the Williams family at this very difficult and tough time. I was honored when I was asked by Lloyd and the family to make remarks regarding Sister Williams. And I have just so much warm memories of her. But you can't mention Sister Williams unless you mention Elder Williams. You have to mention them in the same sentence. And I remember when I, I first came to the Linden Seventh Day Adventist Church, I was a very young man, a little boy, and the Williams family embraced our, our family and took me and my sister under their wings. As a matter of fact, as I thought about what I was going to say and I reminisced over the years, I wasn't even allowed to sit in church unless I was sitting with Sister Williams. My mother would play the piano. My father would be up in the rostrum. Elder Williams would be right next to my father. And I was with Sister Williams. You couldn't sit in church with anybody else but Sister Williams. Otherwise, you were going to have a problem at a later time. And I remember going to their home. And let me tell you something. Sister Williams can cook. Sister Williamson cooked like you can't, you can't imagine it. I, it was borderline gluttony when we would go over to the Williams home. We'd eat and eat and eat, and then we would sit on the couch, and that couch just immediately fanned you to sleep. And I remember going over there. It wasn't millions of times, but it felt like millions of times. And we, we socialized, and we ate dinner, and we had great Christian fun with the Williams family on numerous occasions. Elder Williams stuck next to my dad like a brother. My sister Williams stuck next to my mom and my sister and I like a mother. And throughout the years, Lloyd and I have stuck together as brothers. We have even trained together extensively in the martial arts. For many years, he and I trained together. I have worked security details, and Lloyd has been at the forefront of the music and sound engineering department. And he and I have worked on, on numerous concerts and numerous Christian programs together, and we have never lost contact. And I just wanted to just let the family know, the extended family, the friends know that Sister Williams and, and her family, they, they're unbelievable people. You would never find a, a better family. You would never find a better Christian woman. You never find a, a better Christian man than brother and sister Williams, elder sister Williams. And it's just very difficult to go through different things like this, but we're praying for you. We are, are, are with you during this difficult time. And I'm, I'm very honored that I was asked to make remarks. And I just want the family to know that we are with them and we're, we'll be with them forever. And I, we're, we're praying for you. 
at these at this difficult time. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall not have need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. She stretched out her hand to the poor. Yes, she reached forth her hands to the needy. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but the woman that fareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now this is just a snippet from Proverbs 31, and every time I think about, speak to, and heard about Miss Gloria May, she exemplified the Proverbs 31 woman. As Lloyd would say, cut from a different cloth. <laughs> she did a fine job with her family. I mean, look at all of you. And, and there's many more who can testify to that. I enjoyed her talks when I visited and loved her stories when she was growing up in Jamaica and while she lived in England and all about her little doilies as well. <laughs> she was graceful and loved to chuckle. She was always ready with wise counsel and her words were sweetened with honey. She loved the Lord with all her heart and went to peaceful sleep while we were all at worship. I mean, what a way. Sleep in peace, Miss May. Looking forward to seeing you on that great getting up morning. and all about her little doilies as well. <laughs> she was graceful and loved to chuckle. She was always ready with wise counsel and her words were sweetened with honey. She loved the Lord with all her heart and went to peaceful sleep while we were all at worship. I mean, what a way. Sleep in peace, Miss May. Looking forward to seeing you on that great getting up morning. It's interesting that as we came together to organize the program and we had <clears throat> to uh, make some changes to the normal uh, order of business as homegoing services would go. Uh, it was a great idea at the time to have a number of individuals share their thoughts and their memories, especially during a time where we had been separated from mommy uh, for so long. As, as I sat here, um, two important things happened. The Lord blessed so that this was pretty much the first time that I was hearing the, uh, the reflections because of uh, Brother Fred Whitmore helped me take all of that off of my plate so I didn't have to really deal with that. But the second thing I would have done slightly differently was uh, not come right after <laughs> all of that. Um, because it, it is definitely not just heartwarming, but it is, uh, it's deep to know that you're not the only one as a son or as a daughter or a relative that has been impacted by the most important person in your life. So uh, we are going to be exploring the life in some more detail of Gloria May Williams. <clears throat> it was almost midday on September 22nd, 1929 in Guy's Hill, St. Catherine, Jamaica. 
the Baptist minister in the church next door had just begun his sermon. And it was also the birth of Gloria May, the second daughter to Corporal Herbert and Mrs. Lena Williams. When the family moved to Linstead, she completed her primary education and received a full scholarship to St. Mary's High School in Kingston, Jamaica. The family supported her father's profession as a police officer and relocated to Spanish Town, where her mother accepted the Seventh-day Adventist, or SDA, religion. Gloria then transferred to Kingsway High School, and she succeeded in passing the senior Cambridge examination and was employed with the government record office before relocating to London to study nursing. Upon the completion of her nursing studies, Gloria worked with the Middlesex County Council as a district midwife. While attending a service at the Holloway SDA Church, she met a very charming, a very handsome, a very charismatic young man who became the love of her life. Theophilus Williams was his name. The following year, they were married and she lost the opportunity to change her name because her maiden name was also Williams. Following their first child, Allison Vanessa, her birth, they moved to Cambria Heights, Queens, New York. Gloria and the family were faithful members of the Linden SDA Church, where their son, Lloyd George, was born during that time. Gloria worked as a registered nurse in labor and delivery and, for s and at several hospitals in the New York City area for s 37 years before retiring. She impacted countless lives with her kindness, her professionalism, and her genuine love for people. Traits that she passed on and instilled in all those she cared for, her children, and her family. After much prayer, the Lord brought Gloria and the family to Florida, where they successfully settled down and became members of the North Orlando Church. Gloria has always testified to the divine guidance and direction of the Lord throughout their lifetime and continually praised him for what she called miracles, which further instilled her deep trust in him. She was an avid cook, as many of those doing the reflections made mention of. And she shared her joy of entertaining with her family and her friends. <clears throat> her dinner parties and her carrot cake, she was, she was well known for her dinner parties and her carrot cake and ginger punch. I, I think we still have the recipe, right, Allison? Yeah, I, I hope so. I'm going to have to work on that. <laughs> Mommy was hospitalized in January. And on July 22nd, two months to the day before her 91st birthday, she fell asleep in the Lord, surrounded by her family and close friends. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by her husband, Theophilus M. Williams, her sisters, Elaine Taylor and Beryl Williams, 
She leaves to cherish her memory. Allison, her daughter. Winston, son-in-law. Yours truly, her son. Karen, daughter-in-law. Midel, her adopted daughter. Gary, son-in-law. Patricia, her niece. Lena, sister, and Dudley, brother-in-law. Grandchildren, Ariel, Tyrell, Mshindi, Alexis, Quentin, and Caden. As we were reflecting, One of the things that mommy would always say when we spoke, sometimes she would call me late and she would apologize because she had done 37 years of labor and delivery doing the night shift, so she was a night owl by nature at this point. And uh, I would be in New York working, driving, and she'd call me and apologize and say, Mom, you know, no need to apologize, and we'd speak. And at the end of us speaking, she would say, you know, that's why I like to call you, because I was having pain, and she'd describe where the pain was. But after speaking with you, the pain is gone. And as challenging as it is, was, for us to be separated from mommy for that amount of time while she was in the hospital and then COVID made it impossible for us to do what we started, which was being in the hospital with her 24 hours a day. Someone was always there before the lockdown. It's comforting to know that Jesus has taken her pain away. I'm Ariel. And I'm Quentin. We're going to be speaking on behalf of all the grandchildren. Oh. Some of you may know uh, one of my favorite grandma's pastimes was to watch Jeopardy. Um, so before we begin, we're going to start with a little game called Finish That Saying. How it goes is we're going to begin the saying, and you guys will guess the ending of it. You'll finish it with whatever words you think fit. You guys got it? All right, let's begin. <laughs> the first saying that some of you might find very familiar is, willful waste makes woeful want. want. <laughs> <laughs> we have quite a few here. Grandma had a lot of sayings here. 
This one is one that she would always say to us um, when we were saying goodbye as kids. Um, sometimes she even said it, you know, as we were adults. <laughs> so um, she, would, she would pull us in and hug us and whisper in our ear, be obedient and and respectful. <laughs> um, the next one, I don't know if uh, anybody really heard this from her, um, but myself, because I tend to uh, zone out, to stare in space. So this one is a penny for your thoughts. Yeah. Um, this one I might have got a little too. Some of us, I think, yes. Um, <laughs> you're too rude and outa. <laughs> um, this one I heard from grandma, and I guess she passed it to uncle because I heard him say it a lot too. <laughs> Who can't hear most. <laughs> and then this one I've heard from grandma, but I think she passed it to mommy because I've heard it from her as well. Wanty wanty can getty and getty getty na. <laughs> we have three more. Um, this one I had to kind of explain to Quentin, but I think a lot of Jamaican people are familiar with it. Um, Dupi no hufi. <laughs> now I know, I don't know if her children got this one. I know I got this one a lot. I don't know if they can testify to it. Be careful with that. It's Older than you. <laughs> and then this is one of her favorites. Anything worth doing is worth doing. Okay, so now I'm going to, you know, just share a story, share a little bit about uh, my grandma or our grandma. As some of you may know, I'm a travel nurse. And whenever I got a new assignment, I would make sure to stop by grandma's house and we would talk about the specifics of my assignment, where I was going, when I was leaving, and how long I would be there. But these conversations always end with her asking one question. Are you going alone? I would respond, yes. And she would always answer, hmm, you're bold, you know. <laughs> so far, I've completed six assignments, and we've had this conversation six different times. The last time we had this discussion, it dawned on me. She was the bold one. Grandma left Jamaica, her home, on a boat, traveled several days to create a new home and pursue a career in England. Then years later, she repeated the process, picked up two new travelers, starting a new life, this time in America. Now that's bold, but thank God for your bold spirit, Grandma.
your sacrifices help set the foundation for the lives and opportunities we have now. And I pray we inherit an ounce of your boldness. Our beloved grandmother, you're an incredible woman. You gave us the blueprint to live a courageous life filled with joy and meaning. Your prayers protected us. The copious amount of love you poured into us will continue to flow f for generations to come. You'll be remembered forever. We love you to the moon and back. great honor that I stand before you on behalf of our family. Gloria Williams, Auntie Gloa, she's affectionately known by me, was also my travel buddy. So she knew my whereabouts, just as mommy did. Every trip I took, every place I worked, that was my first call to make sure she would know where I was and what I was doing, no matter where I was. And one of the things that she's always said to me that touches me deep to my soul is the fact that she loved me before I was born. That's amazing love. I can't explain how deeply I feel that. So today, I want to acknowledge a few cards and calls that we've gotten from the family. We sincerely appreciate and extend our love back to you for all the kind words and calls and messages that you've sent and throughout the years just supporting all of us we are grateful and i'll read for you a few in your hearing dear allison and lloyd i know that god is walking beside you as you go through this difficult time although your path is not as easy one you may have been given what it takes to keep you going estelle To the Williams family, may God, the good Lord, be with you and keep you during this sad time. Sister Mackenzie. From Sister Neves and family, to Brother Lloyd and family, 
We are asking the Lord to tenderly care for your deepest needs. Remember that our love and our prayers are with you all. Keep holding to Jesus and prop his promises. God bless you. pastor and members of the Linden SDA Church, Pastor Keith, so Brother Lloyd and his family. To so Allison and Lloyd and family, the Dice family, may God continue to comfort you in this sad time and may his arms hold you close to him because of the beloved hope, if faithful, We'll re reunite with your mother when Jesus comes. To so Allison and Lloyd and family, at this time when words fail to know what, know that you are prayed for. Jasmine and Sister Brown. To so the Williams family, may God's loving presence comfort you his presence, uh, peace restore you, and his promise of eternal life sustain you during this time. Brother and sister small, we are so very grateful your, for your kind words again. Rest well, Auntie Glow. Until we meet.
scheduled to make any commentary. Um, as a profession, I'm a dancer. And I know that that is an unusual um, profession even for most. It's just a small amount of us on this earth that have not just been given the gift to dance for the world, but have been given the gift to dance for God. And it was very hard for me to stand still um, during that song because I don't know if you remember, Allison, you were the first person at Linden to have me come and minister for the blessing of Quentin. And um, it was life changing. And it definitely encouraged me to many years later go back and work towards dance ministry in Seventh-day Adventism. Um, I lost my mom three months ago, who is also a midwife. And when I met Lloyd 21 years ago, the conversation immediately went towards, your mother delivers babies too? Because it was so unusual. And also having the depth and the history of what midwifery really means, because it's not just the delivery of physical bodies, but the time that is spent with an individual as a midwife, what they do for you in that season when you are preparing to give birth made me only want to have midwives when it was time for me to have my son. But Miss G was always so encouraging and so familiar to me. And I believe that it's because of that midwifery, that birthing spirit. And so what we've all acknowledged, how giving, how loving, how caring she's always been is born of that midwifery. She was always interested in birthing the best of everyone. And so I thanked her when she could hear me, and I'm thanking her now for that gift because she has always birthed the best in all of us. She's always spoken kind words. She has always said and done things that remind you of the goodness of humanity. And so we, even as the in-laws, my family is here, I'm sure watching, we will always carry that with us. Amen. Amen. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, be thou our God when life shall end. And oh God, please, be for each and all of us our eternal home. For we beg this petition with thanksgiving in thy Pastor Benjamin Cummings um, was not only the pastor of Linden Seventh-day Adventist Church, but he has been for over these years the pastor and the family pastor of the Williams. As you have heard, they have grown close together. He has been a friend. He has been a confidant. He has been a supporter of the family. And even when uh, um, Elder William passed a couple of years ago, he traveled down here and did the eulogy. And today, again, he will be doing the eulogy for Sister Williams. He is indeed a man of God, and they have trusted his ministry. They have loved his ministry, and over the years have brought great comfort to the family. And at this time, we will be listening to Pastor Benjamin Cummings as he brings a word of comfort to not only those of us who are here, but those of us who are listening all over the world. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, be thou our God, when life shall end. And oh God, please, 
be for each and all of us our eternal home. For we beg this petition with thanksgiving in thy precious and holy name. Amen. Please forgive us for not being physically present with you today due to the most unbelievable and unfortunate coronavirus crisis that is seriously impacting all of our lives with unheard of restrictions, limitations, and devastation. However, please know that we are very close to you mentally and physically. It was the good fortune of my dear wife and I to become acquainted with Elder and Sister Theophilus and Gloria Williams and to develop a long-standing relationship and friendship with them and with their two children Allison and Lloyd that spans 40 years of time when we first met them in 1980. It was during that time that we had to commute to New York from Boston where we had pastored. And it was about at least from three to four months that Elder Williams, who was the first elder of the Linden Church at that time, became extremely helpful to us. As a matter of fact, Elder and Sister Williams both became very close to my wife and I during those early months. We frequently received and enjoyed the hospitality of their lovely home. Our two children and their two children were temporaries during those years. Gloria was glorious. I want to repeat my topic again. Gloria was glorious. Gloria was her name and she was true to her name. She lived up to the meaning of her name by being a glorious person. Glorious is an adjective that is derived from Gloria. Now an adjective is descriptive. The function or duty of an adjective is to describe a person, place, or thing. The dictionary identifies and describes glorious as beautiful, wonderful, admirable, honorable, memorable, impressive, delightful, dignified, distinguished, and the list goes on, beloved. Therefore, it is an established fact 
by the life that she lived, that Gloria was glorious. I believe beyond any doubt, and I believe you do too, that Sister Gloria Williams, as a woman, wife, mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, dedicated nurse, daughter and servant of God, belongs in the category of that glorious woman who is described in Proverbs chapter 31. It tells us in Proverbs 31 that the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. The Lord says in Psalms 116 and verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And then Revelation 14 and verse 13 we read, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, write it down, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. I also believe that Jesus is saying of Gloria, as our Lord said of Mary in Mark chapter 14, verses 8 and nine. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be a shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Beloved, please allow me to share with you in conclusion a few words 
from that memorable poem written by William Cullen Bryant in 1821. The poem had to do with an explanation concerning the meaning of death. The poet said, so live that when thy summons comes to join the innumerable caravan which moves to that mysterious realm where each shall take his chamber in the silent halls of death. Thou go not like the quarry slave at night, scourged to his dungeon, but sustained and soothed by an unfaltering trust. Approach thy grave like one who wraps the drapery of his couch about him and lies down to await the call of Jesus, the life giver. From the grave of death, he will cause us to rise up to receive eternal an everlasting life. Gloria was glorious, and by the grace of God, Gloria will be in glory by the grace of God. Therefore, beloved, let us today determine by the grace of God to meet Elder Theophilus and Sister Gloria Williams in glory. And may that day come very quickly by God's grace. Let us be faithful. Let us be up and doing. And let us always Remember and follow in the path of our beloved sister Gloria Williams. May her legacy, may her life, may the example that she has left on record inspire and encourage us all to walk as she walked, to walk as the Lord would have us to walk and live to the glory of God. And finally, at last, may we together be able to experience the joys and the blessings of eternal and everlasting life with Elder and Sister Williams in God's soon coming kingdom of glory. God bless and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each of you and grant to each and all of us his peace today and always. The Lord bless and sustain you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Williams. Shall we pray together? What a friend uh, we have in Jesus. 
all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, creator and sustainer of the universe, uh, we, your children, now approach your throne. We come, Lord, in a time of trouble. We come in a season of death. We come to you because we know that you're the great compassionate Father. We come because we are your children. And we know that you know our needs. At this time, we need you more than ever before. We want to present before you again the Williams family. We just want to thank you for the life lived by Sister Gloria Williams. We want to thank you for the love she had for you. We want to thank you for the experience she had the, the walk and the fellowship that she had with you. For her dedication, for her commitment, for her life of service. And for the love that she shared with her children and her family. Uh, we, Lord, pray that uh, you would just again... Remember her and the family. We thank you that she has fought a good fight. We thank you that she has kept the faith. And we thank you that now and henceforth is laid up for her a crown of righteousness. An eternal crown that the Lord, the good Lord will give her when he returned the second time. We pray, Lord, that the legacy of service and the legacy of commitment and the le legacy of dedication that she has left behind will inspire us and inspire the family to hold on to you and to trust you in spite of the difficult times. I want to pray for the children, Allison and Lloyd. We pray, Lord, that you would bring them comfort. We pray that you would bring them consolation. We pray that as they walk and journey through this valley of the shadow of death, that they will be reminded that they ought to fear no evil because you, God, will journey with them. We pray for the extended family, those who are here and those who are viewing and the various platforms. We pray that they, along with all of us, will remain faithful. We pray that they will claim your divine presence. That promise that says, you will never leave us, nor you will forsake us. We pray that they will claim it. We pray that they will claim your word. Your words remind us, let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believed also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. Thank you, Lord, that you are coming again. Thank you for the blessed hope. Thank you, Lord, that one day death will die. There will be no more sorrows. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more tears. There will be no more separation. We will be with you forever throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Lord, come quickly. Until then, seal us. Comfort the family. Console the family. Care for the family. And when the role is called up yonder, May all of us be there to meet again Sister Williams, Elder Williams, and all our loved ones that have passed. May we 
meet with them and with you, Jesus, and reign and live with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity is our prayer in all the name, but in the precious name of Jesus. And let the saints say, Amen and Amen. We're going to now sing together hymn number 633. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Mr. Angela, well.
of the internment will be at Woodlawn and Warrior Park. We're asking if you're following in the procession with us, if you could please turn on your headlights and flashes and stay as close as you can to the car in front of you. As we now prepare for the recessional, the clergy can please come forward. Thank you. 